All right. Uh, we are live with the March Baller of the Month, uh, University of Kentucky's own Tyler Kratzer. Congratulations, Tyler, first and foremost. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. So you've been around this league for for a while. Um, you know, you, you, were, you were playing when I was active. And so, you know, you've got a lot of years under your belt. You know, definitely one of the more tenured veterans of the NCDA. What, uh, you know, what does this award mean to you and how do you feel? Um, well, yeah. So like you said, I've been around. It's year five. Just finished for me. Um, but just being able to win bother the month, it just kind of shows like, OK, where I started as a freshman, it kind of all culminates to this moment, like like my plays being seen on the court rather than just, you know, just by my teammates and practice and stuff. It's actually translating to the court and into matches. Um, so it's, it's pretty good honor to win. And I'm, you know, I'm honored to do it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you know, like you said, you know, it's good to be recognized, you know, besides a team other than your own, um, you know, ball of the month is voted on by, you know, a lot of members of the league. And so we all definitely see, you know, your talent and what you bring to the table. So, uh, you know, speaking of when you were a freshman, what got you into, you know, dodgeball in the first place? Uh, so we, UK, um, we have a big, like, week-long thing of events for freshmen that are incoming. And Kentucky Dodgeball hosted a midnight dodgeball event where they took the entire rec center, um, all four of our courts in our basketball, in our gym, and just had dodgeball. There's probably three, 400 people students just playing dodgeball all day and there were different members of the team current team just like on the courts you kind of just surveying like running the show doing whatever and they came up to me and my friends and said hey you know we've got a club team we do we go and compete um, we're part of the you know this organization called the ncda you know we could travel to ohio michigan down south to virginia you know wherever just to play other schools um, would you like to be part of the team we're like cool. Dodgeball sounds fun. Uh, we didn't really know what we we're getting into. Um, it's a lot more intense than it sounds. Uh, but it's, you know, it's been, it's been a pleasure to play. Um, so I'm, I'm thankful for that night. We just walked in the gym just to play dodgeball. Um, and it turned into something like this. Yeah. So, so, you know, adding on to that, you know, that question. So you, you went to your, you know, that event, you know, how did your first couple of practices go? What were your expectations going in and, and all that? Um, so many of you guys know Zach Creasy, um, our former captain, he's always told me that from the very get go, he always thought that I thought I was better than I was. Um, I came in a little arrogant, a little cocky, um, because it's just dodgeball, like, you know, how hard can it be? Uh, but walking in and seeing him and Ricardo, um, one of our former captains at the time too, um, just blister the wall, um, and hearing that pop, it's like, okay, this is not just your normal high school dodgeball. This is this is something that's a lot more intense. Um, so I got put in my place really quick. Um, but then I took to those veterans, you know, him and, you know, Daniel um, Lajeunesse, you know, they kind of took me under the wing and said, hey, you know, we see some talent in you. Um, let's just kind of work with you and mold you and make you better. Um, so just kind of learning from those guys was, was my goal starting out um, and just kind of learning the game of the dodgeball and then letting the talent part come out after that. Yeah. So obviously you had some raw talent and some athleticism until they saw in you. Um, when you first started playing, what was like the skill set you took to first and what was like the hardest to learn? Um, so my freshman year specifically, uh, I was told I was not allowed to throw uh, because I couldn't throw. Um, getting the grip throw down was hard. Um, working, finding accuracy um, and, and then kind of the velocity behind that was very hard. So catching is kind of what I resorted to. You know, I played, I was a catcher in, in baseball. So kind of being in the squatting stance on my knee, like stuff like that, just swallowing a ball, um, you know, with my torso was something that I was used to. Um, so I kind of resorted back to kind of what I was used to and, you know, just worked on catching and crafted that. And then um, I let my arm um, take over from there. I you know, worked on that skill throughout the years and finally got the arm up to the catching. So then it would help all around. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember playing against you and, you know, you were one of the players we did not solo throw. And then, you know, obviously, uh, <clears throat> since then, you know, you've become one of the premier throwers of the South and even in the NCDA. So, you know, that, you know, translates, you know, from your, your baseball skills to catching and then, you know, having to rely on your throwing later because you were, you know, the premier thrower on UK for a while. Oh, yeah. So, um, so you know, 
what's your kind of philosophy when it comes to, you know, the sport of dodgeball? You said when you first joined, it was like, oh, it's dodgeball. How hard it, can it be? You know, how has your mindset changed from then to now? Um, so like, like I said, it came in and it was, it was just dodgeball, but now it's more so like, okay, there's, there's actual like st strategy involved. There's a team component. Um, the whole working with the shot clock, when to throw, when to kill the clock, you know, when do you kill the clock early to get the other team's clock running? You know, when do you have one throw to their two throws? Just the whole strategy involved. It's like, it's like a big puzzle that you learn just like with any other sport, like with football and, and baseball and basketball, like you learn plays. Um, and you have formations you set up in. So, like, this year we resorted to, like, a 2-1-1 a one, one kind of formation across the front where we had two guys on one side, one in the middle, and then, you know, me on the left side. And while, you know, we didn't have the numbers to, to fully stack the front, that's kind of what worked best for us this year. So just kind of working on those things and practicing and, like, teaching the young guys, like, hey, like, you know, you can't just go out there and throw a ball and just hope to get somebody out. Like, you've got to plan your throws and coordinate them um, and you got to know when to cross and when not to cross and stuff like that. So just finding all those skills and working on those um, is something that has made me you know, a more all around better player and a better leader for my team, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, kind of, you know, piggybacking off of that, you know, you mentioned a couple of UK names, you know, in the beginning, was there, was there one player that you kind of like stuck to, to kind of mimic their play style or was it kind of like an amalgam of a couple of the veterans that you, when you joined, that you kind of modeled after? Um, so more specifically, Zach Greasy kind of took me like under his wing a little bit. Um, you know, we connected through baseball, like he played baseball. I did too in high school. Um, and we still talk about it to this day, but like he kind of like molded me. He's like, okay, hey, this is, you know, this is the catching part. And then this is where we grip and this is how we throw and your release point. And then working on the snap of the wrist to getting velocity. Um, and then kind of the strategy involved that he used um, was kind of like, cause you know, he may not have the strongest arm on the team, but he knew when to throw and when not to throw. And that's what helped, you know, solidify his status as one of the, you know, NCDA greats. Um, but then, you know, Daniel uh, Lajeunesse, his energy that he plays with is something that I like, I enjoy because he's always fast paced in your face, like, you know, always in the front line, ready to ready to attack. Um, so kind of mixing those two, like, you know, knowing when to attack or when to slow down and, you know, when to throw, when not to throw, the, you know, the kind of strategy behind it um, was something that I learned quite a bit from them, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always I hated to play against Zach because like the second you look away to grab a ball, he hits you right in the yeah. right in the ankle, always in the like the best spot to the best placement, right in the back of the heel. But um, yeah. So so were there any players during your tenure that kind of gravitated towards you that you took under, you know, your wing? Was there anybody else who you kind of gave back to on UK? Um, so a couple players on the team now. Um, so Justin Conti, uh, he's a senior this year, a four year senior. So he came in the year after I did. Um, and he's somebody who, you know, he was tall and lanky, um, but he had like a slingshot arm. And so it's like, okay, Hey, if we can work on his catching, um, then it's going to be, he's going to be a solid player. Um, so kind of working with him and like teaching him the strategy part and then the work on the catching, like, you know, you can't just reach for stuff. You got to use your body. Um, you know, you don't have a very thick body, so you got to, you know, work on moving side to side and using that as a support. Um, him, you know, kind of came a little bit later. So, you know, he's one that I kind of like focused on because I knew he had some great talent, um, you know, inside of him. And then one more recently, um, David Mead, uh, he was one of our captains this year as well. He'll be coming back for next year. Uh, he came during the middle of COVID um, in the middle of the semester. Um, so this year was his first actual like live tournament, but he was already a captain going into this year, even though he's never played a game. Um, so like he had some talent too. And, you know, he, you know, the baseball thing, again, he was a catcher in baseball as well. So like we, we kind of connected through that and, you know, he had a great catching ability. Um, he's a, you know, a stockier guy. And so he just kind of like absorbed the ball and swallowed it. And, you know, you can't teach that kind of stuff. So if we, we built his arm up, um, so it kind of took what I've learned from from the other guys and instilled in those two um, to make help them, you know, turn into who they were. Um, I'm not taking full credit because, you know, they're, they've got talent, you know, yeah. beyond what I could ever do. But just kind of teaching them uh, the ropes of the dodgeball uh, aspect rather than the talent part of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. You know, giving back to the, you know, 
taking the knowledge that you learned and, you know, passing it down because then they can do it, you know, to the future okay. of Kentucky dodgeball. Um, so, you know, we already talked about players on your team. Was there anybody um, on other teams that you, you know, maybe considered either a rival or like, you know, a player you love to play against, whether it be like a good friend from another team or somebody that you just matched up with well? Um, I would say – well, COVID kind of threw a wrench in that because, you know, two of my uh, three, five years here were, were gone. Um, starting out, we always played, you know, uh, a lot of the Ohio schools quite a bit. So, like, played Ohio State quite a bit. We played Akron, you all quite a bit. Um, I remember seeing you out there and being like, you know, this is one guy we got to watch out for, like, you know, huddle, like, hey, uh, that guy over there, he'll throw and he'll catch. So, you know, beware. Um, and then here more recently, I guess Cincinnati, just because of the proximity. Um, the two tap tournaments we played this year, you know, we played them, both of those. Um, we played them their first year um, in the Nationals of 2019. Um, so kind of them, I guess, you know, seeing Corey and all of them, you know, grow over the years and how much better they've gotten. Um, it's it's kind of cool to see, like, you know, the work that, you know, Wes and uh, Brandon and all of them are doing there, um, coaching them guys up. So that was – I would say if we had to pick a rival, um, I, would, I would say probably them just because proximity and – you know, in recency, we've played them the most. Um, but again, I love playing against those guys. They're, they're super friendly. Um, they're intense. Mm -hmm. They make the matches fun. Um, I wouldn't say really anybody in the NCDA is kind of a jerk about it, um, to say the least. Everybody, you know, in, in the game, you know, you want to beat them, you want to win. But after the game, we're all like a big family. and We all just kind of cut up and hang out. Um, just being at Nationals this year, it was like, hey, like everybody's back together. You see all these familiar faces you haven't seen in two years, like, you got to just socialize and just be, just be guys out there, just hanging on the court with everybody. It was pretty cool. Yeah, having having nationals after a two year hiatus is really really nice. Yeah. Um, so you know, throughout your tenure, you know, you've you know, you've been on you know a roller coaster of Kentucky rosters. You were there when it was at its at its peak. You know, when you guys um, you know were making a run back in twenty seventeen. And then, you know, now uh, where you're kind of at a rebuilding stage, you know, and that that's what makes or breaks teams, you know, yeah. um, being able to go through that recruiting and that building stage. I mean, like you said, Cincinnati, you know, where they mm -hmm. were, you know, before COVID and where they're at now is, you know, night and day. Um, how do you see Kentucky bouncing back after what was, you know, a rebuilding season? Um, we've got to find guys that are, that are committed to playing. Uh, this year we had a lot of freshmen come and take interest. Um, so, but some of them didn't really want to like do the traveling part, um, and take part in that, um, which again, is a big struggle. Um, finances, you know, from the school were kind of an issue with us this year. So kind of working all that was, was a big hassle. Um, so as long as next year's we can get ahead of the game. Um, we haven't done that recruiting event, that midnight dodgeball thing that, you know, got me hooked and a lot of the players that are you know, retiring this year hooked. Um, getting back to that and instilling that and getting people in the gym just to see dodgeball live um, is going to be a big key. I think we do have, you know, some upside. We've got a lot, a lot of young talent that a lot of people haven't seen, frankly, because we just didn't play a lot this year. Um, it was hard to get numbers to go places. So if we can get those guys to come and be committed and then get a new class coming in, um, we could we could fully um, be on the court with a full roster next season um, and, and actually winning a lot more matches than we did this year and playing in a lot more matches than this year. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely – Kentucky's been one of those, like, main state teams, so it's, it's good to see, you know, them, you know, being on an uptick if they have a good recruiting year. Um, so I have some uh, content team questions here. Okay. Um, from uh, current president Hunter Ford, he's got a few – um, so was there a moment for you? It could be a play, a practice, a match where you felt like everything finally clicked, you know, as a player. Um, if so, uh, what was that moment? Um, it would have to be the one and only Southern cup, uh, 2020, right before COVID hit. Uh, I think it was March the week before COVID shut everything down. Uh, we were playing Georgia Southern, um, down there at Georgia Southern and it was overtime. We only took 10, I think, to that tournament um, because we had a few guys injured, a few guys that couldn't make the trip. Uh, over time, it was down to 1v3. 
uh, with me versus, you know, three of them guys and clutching up that 1v3 to win the Southern Cup was like, okay, like I, I got two kills back to back with a throw and then caught the last guy. Um, so like, you know, using all my skills strategy, you know, was there with the, you know, overtime stuff. So like that, that was like one of the moments it's like, boom, like dodgeball, like this, I'm, I'm supposed to be playing the sport. Um, my skills are here. My talent's here. Um, this is, this is a moment that I'm going to remember. Um, so that was, that was probably the moment I would have to, to put on that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that was on stream. I remember watching yeah. that. That was pretty electric. Come watching you come back from a, a deficit. Um, it's always cool. Any type of comeback for a team is oh, yeah. great. Um, and you know, especially for the person who does it, um, are there any schools um, or specific school that you'd like to see join uh, the NCDA? Um, I would like to get Western back involved uh, because, you know, it's another Kentucky school, uh, this new kind of, I guess, region that we're like thing we're kind of looking for. Like that would be somebody that we could play easily. Uh, Bowling Green's not that far of a drive. Um, getting them back involved, maybe some more – kind of Midwestern, so like Indiana schools, um, or maybe even even if you went over into like Iowa a little bit, um, or Illinois, like just kind of bridging that gap between the Michigan um, schools, the Ohio schools, and then the actual Midwestern, like Nebraska and Wisconsin and stuff. Like if we could bridge that gap, um, then I think that could, you know, help the NCDA grow immensely because it's like, okay, now we've, we're not separated by this big, you know, three state, kind of gap it's just we're all here you know right now we have ohio and then you have penn state and then you have your east coast teams so penn state kind of bridges that gap if we could you know maybe get a few more there but more so kind of focus on the indiana illinois iowa area like right below michigan i think that would help the growth of the ncda immensely yeah i i, I could not agree more we've got we've got a couple things in the you know in the, in the works there but um Good to hear. yeah definitely great answer um so uh, Tony Stumpo, uh, Michigan State alumni, asks, um, what does Kentucky Dodge want you to focus on to get back into the final four tier of teams? Um, I would say just just getting numbers, um, just getting numbers, because I think with the leaders we have, we had this year, um, just to say, at least if we would have had full rosters, I think we could have, you know, actually, you know, made a little dent in, in, in the tournament, made a little run. But we just didn't have the, the arms coming into Sunday for nationals. Like, you know, playing three matches Saturday and having four people that could throw and having to throw all, all day Saturday and come in Sunday, like we were all just we were all just gassed. Um, so if we could have had a little bit more numbers, I think we could have made it a little bit uh, deeper run. But then I also think going forward, numbers is going to be a big thing for us right now because we're losing uh, four of our captains, four star or three of our captains, three starters, like three two of us have been here five years, one, you know, for four years. So replacing those is going to be hard. You know, it's me, um, Ethan Helpate and Justin Conti are the ones leaving. So like replacing those guys are going to be hard talent wise, but if you can just get enough people to fill a full roster, that's going to be, you know, you know a big change. And then you can work on the talent and growing those players skill level um, later down in the careers. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so great, great answer. Um, Wes Peters um, asks, how do you plan to help Wes get a team going at EKU since they're in such close proximity to UK? And to add on to it, Felix Perrone, um, former um, NCAA president, asks, or NKU? Um, I would love to see those those two schools uh, hop into the NCDA because, you know, like EKU, you know, we could, we could almost spit on it from here. Uh, it's just a 45-minute drive. It's almost like if we could get EKU and NKU and then maybe throw Western back in there, it's kind of like we have a little Kentucky region, like, you know, Ohio does or Michigan does. Um, we'd have to build up the talent because, you know, dodgeball would be new there, but, you know, Cincinnati started from scratch and, you know, they were con contending for a national championship this year. So I think it can be done um, because all these schools have hidden athletes that, you know, you know, don't go play sports like for the, at the college level. Um, so if you could just find those guys and bring those in, as far as what I can do, um, I will offer my services in any way. Um, I'm looking for a job right now. I'm graduating here in a couple of weeks. So if I can get a job around here, um, and then that might be something I look into. Um, but wherever I go, um, anytime they need my help with anything, you know, I've, I've put a lot of effort and time in, into, this, into this organization here at UK. Um, so I'm help, happy to help anybody else that needs it, wherever it may be. Yeah. Would you, uh, would you consider coaching? I know coaching has been uh, – 
fairly new. Mm -hmm. Um, would you consider like if you, wherever you end up being a coach near, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I definitely could see it. I'm, I'm one of those that I don't, I don't quit things without, without, wanting to do it and this is not something i want to give up yet um I, I enjoy playing dodgeball i enjoy the atmosphere i enjoy being around the team and then you know the league in general um so if the opportunity were to present itself then i could definitely see myself trying to get into that role you ever thought about like moving up to the uh the usa dodgeball you know uh getting a team uh going from there to, uh to play yeah we me and me and justin have talked about it a little bit um just kind of seeing what it's like uh the the problem is proximity like i said a lot of that stuff happens you know in, up in northern ohio and in, in michigan just getting us from up there you know taking a whole weekend you know to go up there is kind of difficult with you know, schedules and, and stuff like that um so like if if they were to grow in you know proximity would come closer then i definitely could see us trying to, to get something together and continuing what we've started here yeah because just based on Kentucky alum alone, you guys could like, you know, uh, have a very, very good team yep. of, of, you know, Kentucky alumni. Um, so this is, you know, going off of the, the content team questions. These are the questions that I like to ask uh, okay. after an interview. Um, do you have a go to uh, pre tournament meal or post tournament meal? Um, so post tournament, anytime we are towards the Midwest, so Michigan, um, like more specifically when we came home from Nationals at Grand Valley 2019, uh, Pizza Ranch. It's a hidden pizza buffet. It's only a Midwest thing. Um, after two days of dodgeball, you know, Saturday, you don't want to eat a whole lot because you got Sunday to look forward to. Uh, a pizza buffet you can chow down on. Um, after that, not really. I mean, in, in sports in high school, we always ate pasta the day before. Um, but I, you know, me, I'm, I'm just kind of like, let's, let's get some fuel in me. Um, yeah. other than that, not really. It's a good question. Though. If, yeah, yeah. If you, uh, if like dodgeball had like walk up songs, like in baseball, mm -hmm. you know, what would be yours? Oh, it's a tough one. Uh, walk up songs. I mm. Let me think about that. Yeah. I'll, I'll come back to that. Okay. One. So, so based on, um, you know, the food question, what's the best spot to eat as a team, uh, in Kentucky? Best spot as a team. Mm. We would take, so here specific to Lexington, uh, Tally Ho. Um, it's a, it's a local joint. It's open 24 seven. Uh, so after practice, you know, usually we get done around midnight for practice. Um, the team would just go together and, and enjoy a meal there. Um, that would be our spot. And we would always say to the hoe, um, <laughs> it's the name Tally Ho. So, so that yeah. would, that would be our little slogan when we left practice would, would be, we're going to go, we're going to go eat some food together as a team and just work on the camaraderie of, of, the, of the team. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I dig that. And, you know, mm -hmm. on court chemistry is, is one thing, but you gotta have, you know, chemistry off the court. You gotta like the guys you're traveling with um, yeah. guys or, you know, or ladies, cause you guys have, we know one of the top ladies in the league. She actually yep. just made the uh, women's all American list, but you gotta, you know, like the group you're traveling with. Um, Cause you, you, like you said, you're going from Lexington to up to Kalamazoo or Grand Rapids, you know, Allendale, Michigan. So you gotta like who you're with, but um, yeah, that's always, always good stuff. Um, I think that's all I have. Have you got the walk-up song yet? Or do you need a, you know, um, walk-up song. Hmm. No, I'd have to think about that. I might, I might throw it in, throw it in the chat. That's uh, tough. Right, all right, we can always post it in the article version. Okay, later. yeah, but, I'll, um, get, I'll get back to you on that one. That was tough. Is there? All right, so one last question just, I just came to my head. If you could make a team of an overtime six of professional athletes, mm. and you were you were the sixth spot, what other five players would you want to surround you? Okay. Um, can they be, do they have to be current professional athletes? No. Okay. Uh, taking Randy Johnson, pitcher. Got a cannon for an arm. Um, I don't care if he can catch. He's got a cannon, and that's going to come in handy. Um, I'm going to take, let's see, probably take LeBron, just because all-around athlete. I, if we can yeah. teach him to throw, I feel like he'll be fine. Um, 
I might this this I don't know if I'm hesitant to say this. So that's two, so I'm three, so I need three more. Um mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. Maybe like a mm, Pablo uh Bartolo Cologne, somebody bigger. Like okay, yeah. like just an anchor, like you, you throw it in his chest, it's gonna stick. There's somebody that's gonna yeah, catch. Yeah. That's all I need you to do is yeah. catch. Mm -hmm. Um so and he's also, you know, a pitcher, so like he's got the arm too. Um, somebody yeah. bigger like that. Um, we're gonna need somebody small and squirrely. Uh, trying to think, I probably take. Mm, I would take an NFL receiver, maybe like uh, Devontae Adams or somebody like that. Okay, uh, they're okay. fast. They've got hands. Um, they're they're used to catching under pressure. Um, they're quick. They can move. They're shifty. Wow. So somebody like that. Um, so one more. Um, I'm going to go with my guy. I mean, baseball connection. He's a catcher. Uh, the guy I looked up to in sports, Yadier Molina. I mean, the goat of MLB catchers. Okay. Uh, so defensively, I mean, the dude's hot for uh, almost 20 years in the MLB. So surely to goodness, he can catch a dodgeball. I like that. That's a good, it's a good overtime six. Uh, Bartolo Colon was, that was not a left field, but I like that pick a lot. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I was just he, trying to think, you know, anybody no, like that's it. got big and stalky that can just mm -hmm. absorb a dodgeball. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, gonna plus his, his, his pitching aspect yeah. too. That's another, you know, he's got a rubber arm too. So that's all the questions I have um, for you. Again, congratulations. You know, um, it's a, it's a huge honor and I think it's well-deserving. Um, you know, you've been in the league in a long, for a long time and you're one of the premier players in this league. So again, well learned and congratulations. Any, any final thoughts? Um, no, I just want to thank, you know, you guys, the, the NCDA like admin team, um, in the league, just in general for, for creating this opportunity for us to, to come and play dodgeball. Um, if it's, if you would have asked me freshman year, what I was going to do for my five years of college, I would have never picked dodgeball. Um, uh, but it's been an honor to be a part of this league. Um, it's been an honor to represent university of Kentucky and continue the legacy that they had. Um, thank you all for all the kinds of words that you've you know said over the years about me as a player. And, um, just thank you guys for the support that you've given us. Um, so I just appreciate everything y'all have done for us. Yeah, absolutely. And congrats again on a great career. Uh, congrats to graduate in college. It's a big deal. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'll see you around and uh, take care. Yeah, thank you.